This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. We start out today in the UK, where the local auto industry just scored a pretty big victory. Jaguar Land Rover is going to build a battery plant in Britain for its future BEV models. After Brexit was enacted, the British auto industry was put at a severe disadvantage and several automakers ceased production there. In fact, Britain was even competing with Spain for this battery factory. But one of the things that tipped the scales is that the UK government will provide hundreds of millions of pounds in subsidies to see it constructed. Tata, JLR's parent company, will invest $5 billion to build the plant, which will have an initial capacity of 40 gigawatt hours, and production is expected to kick off in 2026. Earlier this week, we reported that Vietnamese EV startup VinFast looked to be in trouble after 80% of the investors that put money into the SPAC that the company was going to use to get publicly listed cashed out, and we wondered if the company would ever build its planned U.S. plant. Well, it is. VinFast announced that it's going to break ground on the factory in North Carolina on July 28th. It's scheduled to start production in 2025 and will have an initial capacity to produce 150,000 vehicles annually. Volkswagen is boosting research in the U.S. In 2020, it opened an innovation hub in Knoxville, Tennessee, along with the University of Tennessee and the Oak Ridge National Lab. And now we're starting to learn about some of the materials and technology that's being developed there. For example, to reduce the weight of battery packs, researchers used AI to optimize the structure of the steel frame that houses the pack. It can be 3D printed from liquid resins, holds 30,000 times its own weight, and it's up to 60% lighter. Durability test shows that it exceeds conventional steel frames in energy absorption. Another innovation is a paper-based composite for interior parts. They can be made into various shapes and sizes, and different colors and textures can be added. VW says it could include these parts in future models. They also developed fiber composites to help reduce weight. For example, the lift gate from a 2020 Atlas made from fiberglass reinforced plastic is 13 pounds lighter than the regular lift gate. Bentley and Lamborghini are also using these materials and molding processes for the Continental and Aventador. And lastly, the team is working to improve wireless EV charging using silicon carbide materials. They've been able to increase charging power up to 120 kilowatts from an earlier 6.6 kilowatt prototype, and the goal is to reach 300 kilowatts. And speaking of charging EVs, we got an announcement yesterday from Electrify America that it's going to have some pricing adjustments coming up next month. And it sure sounds to us like it's going to cost more to charge your EV. The big change is that EA is going to shift away from a standard charging price, and instead it's going to come up with a price that is specific to the charger that you plug into. And they're going to charge you more or less depending on how fast your car is charging. The faster it charges, the more you'll pay. And they're going to start charging customers for idle time. That is, they're going to charge you for the time your car is plugged in after it's fully charged. And that is to encourage people to unplug their EV and get the hell out of there so others waiting in line can get their turn. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility, manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. As we keep pointing out, some of the best innovations in the automotive industry come from suppliers. And here's several good examples. The German supplier Male is coming out with a new type of thermal management for batteries that it claims allows a battery that takes 40 minutes to charge to charge in 15 minutes instead. 
and it can increase driving range up to 20% because the battery operates more efficiently. And a Canadian company called Inmotive says its two-gear EV transmission has been verified by a major automaker as the most efficient one on the market. It didn't identify who that automaker is, but it was jointly developed with Suzuki. To shift, an actuator directs outer gear segments in or out of the chain path, while the motor speed is adjusted so that shifts are barely perceptible and they can be done in as little as 19 milliseconds. Combined with a chain and chain tensioner, it provides up to a 2 to 1 gear ratio. Since the transmission, called in-gear, makes an EV motor operate more efficiently, it can increase driving range by 15% or the battery can be downsized by 15% to cut cost. And as fast as electric cars are, it can increase acceleration by 20%. The German supplier Hella, which is now part of Forvia, is coming out with the world's first headlamp that uses high-res matrix LEDs. In fact, it uses over 32,000 individually controllable pixels per headlamp. The pixels can be adjusted to prevent an oncoming driver from being blinded, and on the highway or at narrow construction sites, the optimal lane can be projected onto the road for the driver. Amazingly, it uses 75% less packaging space than conventional headlamps, and the lamp, called the SSL HD, is available on the new Porsche Cayenne. And here's a really cool product for people who live in areas where water usage is becoming a problem. Here's a way to wash your car without using very much water. A company called Rubbit out of Dover, Delaware, has an eco-friendly foam that you just spray on your car. You mix 40 ounces of water with five caps of foam, shake it up, pump up the sprayer, spray it on your car, wait 10 seconds, and wipe it off with a microfiber towel. The kit costs $79, but it's good for 25 car washes, and once you have the kit, the foam refills cost $19. Boy, do you remember when the Hyundai Santa Fe first came out? Ugh, it was a pretty frumpy looking vehicle. But man, oh man, not anymore. Hyundai is showing off the all new version and it looks stunningly good. It has a decidedly upscale look to it, more like a Land Rover than a Hyundai. And you'll see the letter H for Hyundai incorporated into several design elements, like the H-shaped lamps at both the front and the rear, and the H-shaped lower front fascia. Inside, Hyundai claims it has class leading space and says it focused on maximizing rear cargo capacity to appeal to outdoor customers. It also features a curved display that connects the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster to the infotainment screen. Hyundai didn't share any other specs, but we shouldn't have to wait too long. The Santa Fe will make its world premiere in August on Hyundai's YouTube channel. And that brings us to the end of today's report. Thanks for watching Autoline Daily. Autoline Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data.